Consciousness is not just in the head. It is eternally everywhere and ever present. How else do all the atoms in the entire universe know what to do to arrange and present everything in and around us every day of our lives? As God is eternally ever present and everywhere, we are always in Him no matter how far we may stray, relatively so. Our Lord who remains in himself without becoming old makes all things new. Heaven restores everything and everyone. The greatest spiritual ideal is to make heaven on earth. When you have felt God's eternal love upon your being, you wish it most dearly for all of humanity. Having a very ethical mind brings you into right alignment with spiritual and divine principles. Truth is what is real and actual, and that is always happening on all levels of reality, whether we know it or not. The only predetermination for us in reality is back home to God. Not even a thousand thousand orgasms remotely match the love of God when he comes upon our subjective being of soul. Incredible clarity in divine love. Pure consciousness is eternally complete. It is the expression of consciousness that is always ever evolving back into the pure. As above, so below. Just like gravity, heaven and earth are a flowing spectrum from pure to heavy and back again. The darkness is only there as a very expendable catalyst to overcome and realize our true nature in the divine. Good, bad, indifferent, everything here and in the entire universe operates perfectly and is perfect. But we must always strive for the ideal, the good, the beautiful and excellent. The only hell that exists is the illusion of separation. The way of the heart, devotion, will always win over the way of the mind, meditation, every time. For the heart is far closer to God than what the mind is. Only when you have experienced the lowest of the lowest are you then humbled enough to appreciate and experience the highest of the highest. My soul shall make boast in the Lord. A spiritually mature person will always use his good self to glorify God for the betterment of all. Absolute speaking, we are always free in God. Relatively speaking, we must still strive for Him. Realize God and He is in your being, soul, forever onwards. 
The letter of the law deals with the actions of man. The spirit of the law takes note of his desires. Panentheism is the most accurate definition about the reality of God. If consciousness was not essentially non-local and everywhere, then experiencing the boundless state of mystic union with God and his all would it never be possible for us. Man is the original androgynous, for he is both male and female in genetic makeup, the complete unified yin and yang. The closer you come to the Godhead, the more non-difference and non-duality is so. As with all religions, all rivers run back into the same ocean source. Never rely on what others say about you, for they are only guessing about you from their own prejudice and presumption. One day they love you, the next they hate you. Only you knows you as you actually are. And then there is God who knows you even better than you do yourself. Just as the waves are never separate from the ocean source, nor are we ever separate from God. There is more than enough clues here and in the entire universe for us all to discover and realize God. If it be your extreme good fortune to experience such in a moment of earthly time, when subjectivity and objectivity are met in no difference, eternal unity is then experienced and truly realized from that moment onwards. A mystic is any person, male or female, who has directly experienced the non-locality of boundless consciousness. From this, the deeper esoteric mysteries to life and all reality are greatly revealed. This is the culmination of self-realization. When we don't know the answers to life, that is when we must surrender to the great unknown and leave it with God who knows all things eternally as they actually are. We are all in it together. Amen.